Load and go. That's how we roll with the fuel. Throw some fuel straight in those tanks. Light this candle. I'm not going to be using hydrogen for the takeoff. It's all jets at this point. So we can leave the tanks on stockpile till we detach. 100% full tanks. We have lift off. Blasting into the stratosphere. So this is what we would call north over our Mesa. North by northwest. Problem with our moon is that it's on the exact opposite side of our planet from our lovely icy lake base. So if you want to do a moon launch you have to do elaborate fly around in space, get shot by pirate stuff or elaborate skirt around the atmosphere of the planet, get shot by pirate stuff. So we're doing the latter because battery power is still a little cruisier than hydrogen power. We've got a stack of batteries, we've got three big jets and we're just a projectile a moon missile, electric moon missile that's falling with style. So the hydrogen is in reserve at the moment. I am wasting hydrogen reverse propelling, which I'll eventually figure out and switch off. But uh, very simple ship. I'm on one side, Brad's on the other side in his uh, El Fresco chair there. Got an ore detector on the front and a pair of gyros, a couple of cargo bays to take to the moon with a survival kit and a battery and a small cargo container's worth of parts in those cargo containers. So, I'm not fighting my jets with my hydrogen thrusters anymore which will help some experimentation to get the right angle for this particular aircraft to fall gracefully at a decent speed. But there is a heck of a slog to get from this base to a position where you can do a sort of moon burn. Even the most direct route is quite a flight. So hydrogen tanks can be prepped now that I'm no longer connected to anything else there's no chance that someone else's ship is going to suck out my hydrogen because they put their tank on stockpile or some such thing it's safely switch the taps I've got three large hydrogen tanks and two big thrusters for getting to the moon so that's plenty of plenty with the the new hydrogen scheme new hydrogen scheme is very forgiving and much more encouraging of creating hydrogen based craft nevertheless we've gone for the initial electric start So a good timer for this mission is the 28 minutes of battery time that you can see there because apart from small tweaks like that I'm just running the engines, the, the jet engines at maximum, they're just blazing away. Once I get to space I won't particularly need a lot of battery power in this. so. I'm happy to burn some energy getting to the right spot. Hello drilling platform that spawns right underneath us. There's no danger going to the moon, it's perfectly safe. Nothing to worry about around here. Nothing to worry about at all. A few stray bullets. What moon mission hasn't been capped at by a passing aircraft covered in drills. So this 
point we decide to get some just set it up so we can get some bursts of altitude if we get shot at again by any passing horrors I've got it set up with some manual override on the big thrusters so that I can just tap the main engines on and we'll get a big lifting whoosh that can take us to higher altitudes where some of these aircraft we shall pass do not fly so I am playing with the output on the Atmo thrusters just trying to adjust adjust down to 31 minutes now I think I get them to where I'm happy that they're going to push the ship upwards and forwards like a good falling missile kind of arrangement I'm trying to stop the hydrogen burn on these these lower hydrogen thrusters was my issue because I'm doing the uh, electric projectile thing my hydrogen thrusters on the bottom of the ship are constantly trying to lift the ship up and keep it up and that's not what I want we're burning a little bit of fuel on the way there so what I've done I've put this the tanks back on stockpile and now I'll just readjust the electric engines so that it's purely electric lift that we're flying on until we can get closer to the moon you might be able to see a few waypoints one's called other side of the world things like that they're hundreds of kilometers away because this is a long journey to do is conserve the hydrogen and spend the electrical energy. Let's drop that down to 19 minutes. I'm not sure that I tweak them from here on in. You can get a general idea of the mission time based on the power remaining time. Because I do have to edit some things out because this is a long trip. So a bit further around the planet there's these which we call the Himalayas. That's Lake Undermoon because we were passing it spotting the moon. It seemed like a good closer spot to refuel on the way to the moon but there's closer lakes of course. And somewhere on the horizon must be Mount Everest which we eventually waypoint as such because it's just a huge lump sticking out of the planet that you have to fly over if you fly this route to get to the moon if you head north then you fly over Mount Everest but yes, going for a, a bit of a sharp angle on the old flight here not hurtling forwards at maximum speed but getting a bit of extra air to make sure we get over these Himalayas here and we can flatten out on the other side very ponderous business doing a lap of your planet to do a moon burn it's relatively simple to get to the moon especially with the new hydrogen scheme you can take yourself a little scooty with one small hydrogen tank and one small thruster and just scooty that all the way to the moon but getting some payload and some people and some decent sized stuff there still takes a bit of effort and it takes a lot if you live on the other side of the planet from the moon and there's no such thing as moon orbits moon orbits ain't a thing apparently so yes the moon was a myth and a legend in our culture until one day we were exploring asteroids and spotted the darn thing. Since then I've done a waypointing mission to figure out where the moon is and how to get there and what route to take. And this is the practical result of that. A two manned moon mission to establish some sort of token moon base on the surface. 
it, I'm thinking that the the larger part of the journey is the trip around the planet. The actual moon burn itself I think is it's less than it's definitely less than 40 minutes and I am of course editing chunks of this out which is why we leapt from over a desert to over the snowy mountains to over different snowy mountains thusly so we are now 104 kilometers from the home base that we originally launched from pretty much on the other side of the planet launching point is 100 kilometers away and our battery power is now down to four minutes and it's time to switch over to the glories of hydrogen clearly because if you run out of power your hydrogens won't work and things will be bad left it's time to climb into a position to do a moon burn so now we can blow open the taps again because our inertial dampeners are on we've got flames coming out the side and out the bottom compensating for various sliding directions that we're doing main engines are now on and in manual so they've got a little glow but they're not doing much positioning myself for a good moon angle so I can engage cruise control because it's important to be able to go and make a cup of tea on the way to the moon Moon missions and tea, well, for intelligent people I don't need to explain that to you, but it's important stuff, so we crank up the cruise control, already bled off a whole bunch of gravity, so now we kill our electrics we're at maximum newtons on the big bad large thrusters there flogging along at maximum speed heading for the 10k up mark a solid bit of momentum once we get organized we can taper back the uh, level of thrust from these engines that's an overkill level of thrust at the moment get ourselves on course and then sooner or later I'll figure out that it's time to drop that thrust so Less than half, 144, back up to 120, right on the edge of where we're going to lose power. So they're not even at quarter power because we've we've just the momentum we had from our atmospheric thrusters plus a sharp burn. We're already down under half gravity. We're down to a third gravity. Once you start shedding that gravity, it really takes you bugger all to just keep cruising. So, we know from scouting that there's some sort of large southern ice cap looking affair on the moon. So we're going to set a course for that. 72 kilonewtons down to 48. 48 and we're still at max speed 90% of our fuel left all too easy 20 k's up and that 
that's how we do destination moon in this kooky silly little moon ship the kind of thing you'd normally have in a moon ship set up very atmospheric but you saw the kind of uh, earthly trip you have to take first it's a significant part of the journey we're not hauling much cargo to the moon the idea behind this one was to get a vehicle and two people there safely with enough stuff to set up a basic moon base and then see what we need from there there's a nice smattering of asteroids all the way to the moon which is very handy if you're sort of chaining together resources and things leapfrog to the moon a chain of recharging stations there's all sorts of possibilities from that we've got an ore detector and are inclined to cruise past things but the small grid ore detector isn't really up to much down to 24 kilonewtons of thrust out in zero gravity now I can kill the engines all together and just dampen a cruise once I realize there we go so my forward and reverse engines are now both off and it's only my strafing engines with the inertial dampeners that will actually kick in and do anything if I start turning I sort of prefer that to switching off the dampeners out in space because you don't want to suddenly find your dampeners were off when you thought they were on you're going to have a bad time so zipping along in zero G at maximum speed with 90 odd percent of my fuel left all too easy to do a moon run nowadays in terms of resources in terms of getting shot by pirates and crash landing due to user error that's a whole different statistical ball game but as far as uh, just having the hydrogen fuel to get there and the resources to zip on up there still takes you ages to get up there at vanilla speeds but you can get up there with plenty of fuel in your tank nowadays I'm giving the new hydrogen system the thumbs up Enjoying a cup of tea on the way to the moon. Extremely simple disposable ship. It'll just get chopped into pieces once it's on the moon, and I've got the storage to put all the bits away. Just chop it up and stash it. hear death noises well, that's interesting I don't know if that's my passenger suffocating or if there's some sort of glitch where we've got suffocation noises and not a health loss I'm not getting the, the flash at the edge of the screen but not exactly sure what the gasping background noises are in aid of, but uh, they're very atmospheric. It's like something out of some sort of alien sequel. Atmospheric but weird. But anyway. Lots of activity out here getting closer to the moon, a few flickers of pirate signals zipping past. 
Dag Beacon. Bit of uh, NPC activity on the moon. Plenty of pirate activity, reavers going past, corruption hang out around the moon a lot. The regular old space pirates have got a bunch of bases on the moon. They all like to hang out around here. Seventeen hours of battery life left now that we've switched the engines off. It was like two minutes or something with them on. So we've got a ship to recharge from. I brought a bottle of oxygen. I don't know if I bought any more on the ship. Oxygen's relatively forgiving, whereas electrical power in your suit is most likely limitation we discover an interstellar cartel what fun they sound like wild and crazy guys we should go hang out with those yakuza mafioso types what could be more friendly than space mafia don't remember actually bumping into the cartel but i'll keep an eye out for them So we've got a nice blue ice cap on the bottom of the moon covered in icy blueness which is full of life giving oxygen which is handy. It's not a case of desperation for oxygen but it's definitely nice to have a supply. Hydrogen on the other hand we definitely Definitely don't mind having some hydrogen ice supply and therefore an electrical supply if needed. So I'm fishtailing around a bit because this is a very simple, simple, simple rocket ship. And it doesn't have a bunch of thrusters in every which direction. I mean I've got my braking thrusters which are okay. But mostly its power is all down the back as a rocket should be. So that means if I want to do a bunch of inertial dampening from high speed, I'm probably going to start fishtailing around and just shading speed that way until I slow right down. And then I can orient in on where I want to go from there. And if I'm cruising at a more reasonable speed, then my, my regular braking engines will be able to slow me down and take care of it. Now of course at this stage we need to get a bit closer to the surface, maybe get some readings from an ore detector. But we're mostly checking out the lay of the land, trying to find a good crater, an icy spot that's a good potential little base setup. So there's plenty of blue all around here, it's like an ice cap. So as you can see, 800 meters and closing. And now another signal from 100 meters. So we're going in for the landing. It's not entirely safe on the moon. And Looks like I've just realised there's some stuff in weapons range, maybe? No? Yes? No? Apparently not. They're coming up for weapons range about now. We're going in for a landing. But I seem to remember this happening. Where I noticed that those red blips were not kilometres away. And decided to put the pedal to the metal and get the fudge out of town. that nice crater. What a deep dish of a pizza that one is. It's got ice down the bottom. It's got a really elevated craterous rim of rock. And it seems that our ore detector 
is telling us that there's some readings around and those things that are chasing us have stopped chasing us for now and will not see us land if we are quick so into this beautiful beautiful little crater we go okay down for the final landing crash my moon rocket at the last minute but of course that means I'm going very slowly and my passenger Brad quickly realizes that if I'm busy being Buzz Aldrin then he can quickly be a Neil Armstrong and jump out onto the moon there and have some boots on the ground so there you go down safely into a nice deep crater filled with ice on the moon with a lovely view of the earth over there and none of our base to be seen on that earth next time I glance at it you might be able to see that the, the waypoints for our base are like right in the middle so prepare for fun drilling noises not sure if I can spare you the fun drilling noises dig a tunnel so we've got a crater and then we've got this little this little notch in the crater and we've got me remembering to remember where I've dug a little base out super handy always remember to get a location folks so yes we've got this nice big crater we've got this this crater within a crater little notch here and then I just burrowed into the wall there into the crater's rim and then that gives us a nice little hidey hole on the moon we can slap down a bit of a large grid framework put down cargo battery survival kit and then you've got the makings of a of a moon base so much excitement and fluffing around and trying to decide what to do with our new base but Brad's got his drill out and he's ready to go as always so the rumor has it the ship is parked forgot to turn the power off but it's fine basically a case of hollow this area out a bit get a large grid construct happening down in here at some level Just try and create a snake of steel going deeper if I can. Deeper and around a corner. And then the first thing to get down, I think, is a cargo container because you want to unload your ship because something could come along and blow it up and you would lose your cargo. So if you've got a cargo container on a frame, you can stash your stuff away. Uh, what else then a battery and a survival kit it's usually a good start be 
Yes, the moon's pretty forgiving, I find. You can mine easily, there's enough gravity, things fall down, they don't float around in your face weirdly like they do on asteroids. Uh, but the reduced gravity means you can jetpack around for very little fuel. Your oxygen doesn't drain that fast, just carrying oxygen bottles around is fine, you don't need a ton of oxygen thingos on your ship in particular. You need some on your base and whatnot, but power is the consideration, not not your uh, oxygen usually. So finding a, a power gen system for the moon is something you want to figure out. But this whole hemisphere is just covered in ice, so look at it all. Our crate is full of it. There we go. Got a large cargo happening. Can unload my junk. Unload the ship before some passerby decides to put a bunch of bullet holes in it. So I've got the three medical supplies there I need for a survival kit. Just preloaded it with what's needed for the task at hand. But yes, this is a nicely sheltered little spot. Down in the bottom of this crater. So this ship is just parked here, we unload it, then we saw it up for bits and stash all the bits in the small box or in another small box, Keep adding them, Got a few reactor components, you need to set up some sort of reactor to keep the batteries charged on the moon, it's always a power issue on the moon. You don't have windmills, so you can have solar, but some passerby will shoot them off. Or you can have reactors, or you can have hydrogen engines. Or within reason, you can just keep bulk mining and building new batteries. And the new battery will have a kilowatt hour of power, which you can just drain and use and pull it to bits, and you're just losing power cells each time. But chemical power generation. Anyway, hope you like our new moon base and enjoyed the moon trip. That's how we're rolling on the moon. Be soaring this up, taking it to bits, and I'll make another video of what we're doing on the moon and how the moon base is shaping up in the future for you.